Hey, Sarah, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Very good. Thank you. Good, good. Um, thank you for talking with me today. I'm a huge fan of your work, as I assume everyone who's speaking to you today is. Oh, that's nice of you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> appreciate you doing a doing a, a story on our uh, on Welcome to the Blumhouse. Oh, absolutely. Especially because it's I officially have passed as spooky season, so it's all about the horror now. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Especially in especially in uh, uh, is, is October first Thursday, so we're very close. Friday. Friday. <laughs> Yes, so close, so close. Um, so for people who, who don't know about Welcome to the Blumhouse, I was wondering if you could tell a little bit more um, about what it is and what the next film series revolves around. Yeah, sure. So so Welcome to the Blumhouse is a partnership we have with Amazon. Um, we, we agreed with them to do eight movies together. And the parameters for the choosing the movies were that the movies had to be scary or thrillers um, or get under your skin in some way. And the other, the other thing we decided is that the, the eight filmmakers should be from exclusively from underrepresented groups of people. For a while, we were going to do 50-50, but I'm glad we decided to do 100% of the directors being uh, people who don't look like me. And um, this second group of movies, uh, The Manor, Black as Night, Bingo Hell, and Madras are, are not only made by... Um, by underrepresented directors. I think um, in a lot of ways, they're kind of more cohesive maybe than the first group of, of movies because they're all about people who have um, been mistreated and people from, again, groups of people, you from, from, from types of people you don't necessarily see a lot in the movies. Um, which is which is which I think is is not good. Um, I, you know, they're all all of them are are have women as leads. A lot of them are about older women. Um, we've had a lot of luck at the company um, working with older actresses, and we continued that tradition with these four movies. Um, but these four movies are not not are about um, um, on screen about issues that are uh, are are difficult for underrepresented groups of people. And what we, we you know, again, it, we wanted to make the movies scary. I didn't want to make the movies, you know, lectures about uh, how to make the world a better place. But I think that all the filmmakers have tucked these themes into very well-told, scary, entertaining films. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, you're right. When you pick these films and um, these marginalized voices, it's the only way that horror can truly progress, really, because you're seeing horror from different perspectives. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think it's important. I think you have to keep updating what horror is. People are, you know, you ha if, if you don't reinvent it all the time, then it stops being scary. And one of the ways to reinvent it is to have the people telling these stories um, from different backgrounds and different, different, the different, different parts of the world than used to be traditionally done um, in all of Hollywood. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, some of them just on name alone sound incredible, like Bingo Hell, <laughs> for example. Uh, Gigi, is Gigi's, just... Gigi's, Gigi's, uh, that's our second or third movie with Gigi. We have an overall deal with her. And uh, she I think she's a great filmmaker. She's got a crazy sense. I think uh, the, of all the four movies, Bingo, Bingo, Bingo Hell is the furthest out there. You know, it's furthest afield. It's really wild. It's super gory. And uh, I love it. <laughs> Oh, absolutely. Um, and from talking to some of the filmmakers today, you can tell that a lot of them have a great appreciation of classic horror as well. Yeah. Was that an important factor or do you just want to go for the story? No, I think it is. I mean, it's it always helps when the when the filmmaker you're working with is versed in the history of horror. They don't have to be, but it certainly helps. And I think I think, like you say, I think that's the case with these four filmmakers. They're very kind of they saw where their movie was going to fit in in the canon of horror, and they were there were movie references they made when they were when they were pitching their movies, which were helpful, you know, and which uh, which helped categorize the movie, land the movie in a certain place. And they're all uh, they were all they were all very versed in uh, in horror, and so that's always that's always helpful to to work with someone who you have similar touchstones or similar reference points. Absolutely. And I'm sure it's going to show with the films as well. Um, what is what you were talking about, older actresses and some famous faces such as Barbara Hershey. But there's also a nice collection of younger audiences, paired, younger actors paired with like the classics and people that we've seen before. Was that important for the, the series of films? Yeah, it was important to um, 
I mean, one of the fun things, you know, and Amazon has been great about encouraging us to work with people who are lesser known and may not have had a chance yet. And, uh, and one of the things I love doing these movies is we discover, you know, discover, discover, you know, undiscovered talent, and they go on to do a lot of other, a lot of other things. So it's great. Uh, it's great that our partners right at Amazon are open to that. They don't necessarily just say, like most people, just cast a bunch of famous people. You know, they're very open to, to taking shots on uh, people who haven't done a lot of, uh, a lot of movies before. Absolutely. And um, on the, the other spectrum, you've, you've sort of accumulated a, a nice little healthy set of familiar faces that appear in your films quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's good to mix and they support each other, you know, the, 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 um, and they mentor each other, you know, actors who Barbara Hershey was a great, great mentor to the younger actors. Uh, she worked with in that movie. And I think that goes, that goes, that goes, that goes for all the movies, um, which is really, you know, which is really nice. So um, when you started, started Blumhouse many years ago, was this something that you wanted to do? You wanted to back independent new filmmakers yeah, it was. I mean, I would say it in a different way, but something I we 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 get a lot of movies that I want to make, but that don't fit uh, a wide theatrical release, and I wanted another another outlet for the company. We see all these scripts that, and and some of them, I used to think this is a great movie, but we have we have no place to make it. And there's a movie that's sometimes right for streaming that's not right for theatrical, and and that was what I was. So the reason I was excited to make this overall deal with Amazon and and. And it's worked out well for us and worked out well for them too, is uh is that is that it gave us a place to put some of these scripts we were seeing that wouldn't necessarily fit in our on our on the film side of our business, but fit really well here. And uh and so I'm happy to have that. And uh and uh and going forward, it's great. And it brings the movie and the TV company closer together. We work together very closely. A lot of the scripts that wound up here were scripts that were came into the movie company. Um, so, uh, so I'm pleased about that. Absolutely. And you, I mean, it, it brings up the point that a lot of people, uh, sort of dog on streaming, um, versus cinema, but actually a lot of famous horror films made their kind of statement on video, on the video circuits. And this is quite similar that you kind of find your favorite film on a streaming site late at night with your friends, you know? And you just kind of want to tell people about word of mouth. So it's, it's kind of important that you're doing this on a streaming site for these yeah, kind of smaller and, and, and the other, voices. Yeah, and the other thing I would say is streaming gives life to movies that maybe got, you know, would have ordinarily been ignored. You know, we did a movie called Hush um, that Mike Flanagan directed. That was a streaming only movie and tons and tons of people saw the movie. But uh but it never came out theatrically. And the fact that it's on, if it hadn't been on streaming, that wouldn't, it never would have been discovered. So I think there are a lot of, there, there's a lot of good things about, uh, about these smaller movies being on streaming. Oh yeah, absolutely. And I can't wait for people to watch them because even just, just the title alone and the premises alone and the acting alone, it's, it's just phenomenal. Um, oh, would oh, this be oh, a series thanks. that you continue going forward? Um, maybe next year you pick a different theme and they're different for, four films to fit that theme. What did you say? What would I do next? Yeah, would this, would Welcome to Blumhouse just continue? Will it extend? I hope so. I, I, I think, I, I really, I don't have any reason to believe that it won't, uh, it won't continue. I think, like I said, it's been a great, it's been a great tool for Blumhouse. And I think the movies have performed well on the service, on Amazon service. So I don't see any reason it wouldn't. It's just not official yet, but I certainly, certainly am, am, have high hopes that it will. Oh, well, I hope so, because uh, it's ama they're amazing, and it's incredible, and the work you're putting behind it is, is incredible and perfect for spooky season. Good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with me today. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed. Yeah. Nice. Yeah.